This is a day in the life of a software developer. So let's just get started. This is my setup where I code right now. And I use this screen and this screen mainly. And I have these two TVs up here that I airplay to if I need another desktop or if my co-founder friend is here because we're building a software company right now. He'll sit right here and then I'll blast stuff here so that he could see it and vice versa. He'll do the same thing so I could see what he's working on. So yesterday I basically got this software to where if you pop in a URL here, it populates the YouTube video for you. So for example, I just did that and boom, that video showed up. And so I did, and then what this software right now does is it takes a video that you have and if I click turn video into email, it will make an email out of this video. So we'll do this. And then whenever that gets done, I'll be able to click here and it'll bring up that email, uh, that video, but written out as an email like this. And it'll give me two versions. So version A currently will give me a pretty good copy, but version B generally tends to be tighter and works better. Um, yesterday, I had to also build that whole thing out. I had to build out the feature where when I hit copy, it copies version A to clipboard, and when I hit copy for version B, it copies version B to the clipboard, um, as well as the ability to delete it. And if I wanted to open it in Google Docs, I can also open it in Google Docs, and it makes it editable, and it creates a public Google Doc so that the user can see this um, email. And right now what's really important as we're building out the software is everything should be as fast as possible during the prototyping phase. So we're trying to use platforms that are as low code as humanly possible. And the, the reason for that is so that we could build fast and figure out if our idea is actually worth it and the market wants it. And if the idea is good and we start getting users, well then, cool, we can start removing a lot of the low code and turning it into like more of a coding application, right? So right now it's like, let's say 80, 90% on the low code end and it'll start going towards 10% on uh, low code and it'll become a lot more code because we'll want it to be performant, we'll want a lot more control and so, yes, so if you're a startup founder and you're looking to build, I believe this is the way to go. Currently, the software design actually looks like this. So initially, when a user jumps on, they see this screen and they sign up. The next screen they see is this to log in or to sign up. And then once they do that, <clears throat> They get taken to this page, which doesn't look like this. It's showing it to like this, but it looks like this. It has two different states. And so once it's in a loading state, that's when the loader comes up. And then we have this, right? So this is when user clicks here. Um, and we have authentication working, which means that if I take you to this, if you're not authenticated or if it's not your email, it won't show up here for you. So that was really cool. And you know, with, with this tool, I was able to build that in honestly, like I was able to build this in like two to three hours. Whereas with next, it would have taken me days, if not a week or two, because I'd have to get Firebase set up and I'd have to get Google sign in set up and I'd have to design the pages all on my own. And I'd have to work on centering divs and putting things in the right places. And I'd have to spend a lot more time on debugging and coding it and making sure that everything is running. And I feel like when you're, if you're a software developer at a company, that's fine. You have all the time in the world, money in the world, resources in the world, do things as right as possible. But when you are self-funded and you're a startup founder, because this is a startup that we're building from scratch, it's about speed and getting to market as fast as possible. So Nas and I are basically discussing that V1 of this MVP is pretty much ready. We Our goal is to get to a thousand, I don't know if you guys could see that, but a thousand users.
like thousand people on wait lists for this. And we're deciding to not put a lot of, there's a lot of features that we have planned that we're planning to just like for now hold off on. You know, we have this entire list of what we need to do next. Yeah. You know, we got bug fixes, we got hitting the back end, we got adding, uh, allowing users to add in longer than 15 minute videos. But we're deciding to not do that at work primarily on the core features. So it's like, okay. So then if we're thinking about core features, What's pure core to ship it? Pop in the link, get an email That's it. as a text. That's it. Okay. That's totally it. So. The only thing right now we're missing right now is we need to, wait list is there. Uh-huh. Like, literally we can ship this out like now. Mm -hmm. We can test out a few more things. We can ship this out now. Yeah. We can make some content. Start putting people on the wait list. Yeah. Start selecting people to start to use the software. Uh -huh. Literally today. The only thing we need now is like a, just a type form that we talked for the month about. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. And for the app itself, the only thing I feel like we need to do is just stress test it for like 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah. I think we just take like, I don't know, how do you feel about that? Like imagine we took like 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Yeah. And you just try to hit it as many times as you can. Yeah. I'll try to hit it as many times as I can. Under 15 minute videos. Yeah. And then... Um, we can even use the same video. Yeah. Or yes. two, three videos. Like. I would say, like, let's just keep doing different videos so then we have, like... Yeah. I don't know, whatever. Like, like it breaks on Hormozzi's videos, but, like, you know, it doesn't break on ours. I don't know. Like, you know how it's, like, all of a sudden random bugs come up? Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you feel, like, about that? I think it's good. I think it's good. I think let's fucking make it happen. Because at this point, there's nothing extra. Like, anything extra that we add is just going to be, like, nice to have stuff. Yeah. It's not a must-have stuff. Yeah, like, even, for example, when we were talking about, like, um, if I go to this page, like, we were talking about adding an error handling. But the dumber version was just to add in text to tell the user, hey, just choose a video under 16 minutes. Yeah. Make sure it's a YouTube URL. And so we, we didn't even like add in fancy error handling right now because we and don't we, need to. And we can, well, we can literally just like test on desktop, test on mobile. Um, and yeah, and that's, and that's it. So I don't think okay. we need any error handling now whatsoever. Just so then we got a game plan. Mobile. Spend the next 30 minutes and let's test. So, yeah, so another question I have is... Currently, we have two versions of the email that gets sent. One is more tighter, right? And one yeah, is so version A, and then when I scroll down here, I see version B yeah. of the email, yes. Do we want to keep it all in the same doc, or do you want to separate that? Be like, hey, version A in the... So basically, two different Google Docs for two yes. different versions, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's add that feature, which is going to take like 10 minutes, and then let's stress test it for the next 30 minutes. It's not probably gonna take like 30 minutes, Mike. Probably. No, 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 it's not. Okay. It's gonna take like five minutes. Yeah, okay. I'm sure, I'm sure. Okay, okay. So we get that in, okay. and then we just stress test for the next 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like right now, but before we plan the rest of the whole day out, let's just do that as fast as possible and then like make the next plan. But my question is, is there what I'm trying to say is, is it valuable to the user to have two versions of a separate document? Because it doesn't matter whether... Because they can miss it. Last time when the email was long, you couldn't find where version B was. So we should just make it two separate docs and that's it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. awesome. Let's do it. Let's do it. So let's duplicate this. So we duplicated this Google Doc that they get. And, yeah, then, from, doc. and then from this one, uh -huh. hopefully you don't have any keys here. But yeah, I think I don't think you do. No, and then version this one is not gonna have version B. So I'm gonna remove version B from this. Yeah. Uh, and then give it a little space here, like that. So now we got two Google Docs that the user will get. Okay. So uh, so we got two Google Docs, and now we have to make both of them public, right? Yeah. And make the top one public and the bottom one. Yeah. Just a duplicate on this. Um, so th this right here is what created the Google Docs, and then this is what makes them public. All right, so we just made a bunch of changes, 
created Google Docs, made both of them public, then we send the text to the user that the, all of them are public. And uh, now I'm gonna hit merge to production and hopefully nothing goes wrong. <laughs> Don't worry about that commit message. <laughs> yeah, here we go, merging the whole thing to production and it's produced. So here's a fun version that we added. We can delete emails too now. Fancy, look at that. <laughs> so now after all our hard work, it's time to test it. So I did put in a video, it turned it into an email. Let's go ahead and uh, click. It's this video, by the way, just to show it to you. Mm -hmm. This video right here. And then now I click AI transforms traditional coding jobs. I get the two versions and now when I hit open in Google Docs, version, this email just opens up version A. And then for version B, when I click this, this version just opens up version B, which is fantastic. And the texting thing that we were talking about is users get a text message like this when their email is ready. So it says your email is now ready. Here's the title of your email. Here's the YouTube video it was made from. And here are two different versions. So user can click this version and then see what their email looks like. So they can turn it into an email or a social media post or whatever they want. The feature I want to work on now is I want to avoid the user from abusing the app. So I don't want them to be able to send in multiple requests at one time. So the way that I'm doing that is on our back end, if I go into our users, let's say I go to this user here, I am going inside this user and I'm, um, I added a field called uh, current status, okay? So it's like, are they currently, you know, did they hit upload or not? And this current status changes when they start uploading. So once they start uploading, this current status will update. In the start, the current status will be empty. And uh, on my back end here, I'm just saying if their current status is empty, then continue the workflow. But if their current status is not empty, meaning like something is, some kind of thing is processing, like this back end workflow that we have, this giant workflow, if this is processing the entire time, then I want you to just end the workflow here. And I put the reason for ending and I said, workflow ended because user tried submitting multiple requests at one time. Don't abuse this app, my guy. <laughs> so error handling, baby. All right, it's 1.43 p.m. Time to take a lunch break. Let's see what we have for food. We got a lot of healthy stuff. I love these chicken protein bites, so I'm just gonna have one of these bad boys. 140 calories, 24 grams of protein. We're just gonna take these guys and dump them in here. Beautiful. There we go. And what's amazing is these come from Costco, they're pretty cost effective and I don't need a chef or anything, you know? It's like super easy and nice. I could just buy that in bulk. And that's it, I'm just gonna have that with, um, I have this hot sauce, this is amazing hot sauce. This, especially this one, the Caribbean one. Best hot sauce in the game. I love spicy food. So that, and then just fork and I'm good. All right, I'm here at my desk. And uh, this is the hack I have to get steps in, otherwise I'll never get steps in. It's too boring to just walk for me. And so, just gonna grab my snack here. So Nas and I have been stress testing the app for the last 20 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, and we kind of just started. And uh, within that stress test, we put up, we sent out a bunch of requests. A bunch of those requests are going through. One has failed, like the one that's on the red there. And uh, if I come back to our app, 
you can see that this video here, powerlifting meets, I, I can see powerlifting meet, this has turned into an email actually. And if I scroll out, it's turned into written copy, I mean, right? And we have two different versions. Version B is generally like the better and the tighter one. And you can see the versions right here. And let's try opening it in Google Docs. And it does indeed open inside of Google Docs. So that is amazing. And we're getting the text messages as well with these links, which is also really, really good. So it looks like it's doing a really good job. I mean, out of eight or 10 requests that we kind of spammed it with, it only really failed one. So now we're finally starting to hit some errors. One of our first errors that happened is uh, our Claude API that we were actually using it ran out of money, so we gotta go and update that. So our stress test, how is our stress test going right now? Naz, what would you give it out of one out of 10? Is it going smooth, 10 out of 10, or is it not going as smooth as we thought? I'll say it's like an eight, eight, eight to nine. Okay, not bad, so that's yeah. pretty good. So let's keep making progress. We had two errors, that was pretty much it. But it's like even errors, it's not really that, like not crazy important, honestly. Yeah, so let's fix this one now. It's 4.20 p.m. right now. And I just had my second meal, had a lunch break, working with my co-founder, who's standing no! right there. And we made a lot of progress on the app. V1 is now ready. And now we have to transition from building the software to actually growth hacking mode because we got to start getting it in the hands of people. Otherwise, we will not, never have any users. So... Stay tuned for that. So we basically just came here and we're now going to the gym. Headed to this gym right over here. It's pretty nice. And I just got my new shoes actually. My new lifting shoes. So now we're at eight. It's about 8.30. We had a really good day. Not solved a coding bug that we were stuck in. Yeah. So bothered, bothered that, like literally just nothing was working. Yeah, and then I had to like go step by step, you know. Keep going. You gotta look good for the camera, bro. Yeah. There you go. Look at the camera. Was that natural? Very natural. It's the most natural I've ever seen you. Hell yeah. You tired, Kazi? <laughs> I did not believe this. 12! No! Damn, he passed everything. 13! Mm. So it's about 10, 21 p.m. right now. And I'm gonna basically eat dinner, finish up my macros for the day. Um, but basically just plan out my work for tomorrow and we should be good for today. It's 1.30, 7 a.m. and I've not been able to sleep, but I got really excited. So I worked on something and um, there was a problem that was bothering me, and so I'll show you what I did. So like, I'm getting the titles of these videos, but right now I'm getting the titles and like my AI LLM system, Claude is coming up with these titles, but that's super inefficient, cost me a lot of tokens, and I have to spend a lot of money to do that. I'd rather just pull these titles automatically. And so I decided to, uh, start working on a script and I started talking to chat GPT and I was like, Hey, is there a way I can just pull the title using Python? So I don't have to like, you know, use AI to come up with the title of the video based on the transcript because it's too much. So it told me about this library called YouTube DL. Um, I tried this, 
YouTube DL library, but I kept running into errors and things kept breaking. So I tried this for a while, but YouTube DL was not working for me. And then eventually I found this amazing library. It's actually called PyTube. It told me about it. Actually, ChatGPT told me about it. Google search and Stack Overflow didn't really help out. And it gave me all this code and I took all this code and I actually boiled it down to a one liner and it's actually quite nice. So I'll show you right here. So if you take a look at this, I mean, the code is, it's a nice little one liner. So you pop in the URL and then you just ask for that video title. Okay. The library is PyTube, right? So. I'm importing YouTube from PyTube, so you just call the YouTube function, give it the URL, and ask for the title. And boom, right there. How I work 12 hours a day without getting tired. And if I take this URL and I copy it and I paste it in, it comes right up right there. So this is why I say it's so important to be really passionate about coding and love it because I was in the middle of watching YouTube content and about to wind down and sleep, but I love it coding so much that I thought of a problem and then I just started working on it. And there are times where I'll go way beyond 1 a.m. to 4, 5, 6, 7 a.m. at times just because I'm like obsessed with the problem and trying to solve it. So keep this in mind when you decide that you're going to be coding, right? I want you to learn how to enjoy it. And preferably, you should be obsessed with it or enjoy it a lot. It'll make the journey a lot easier. I'm pretty much exhausted. We gave it our all absolutely crushed today. Got a lot done on the app. V1 is now ready. So tomorrow is going to be all focused on growth hacking, trying to get this in the hands of users. And maybe we figure out this app sucks and nobody wants it. And that's okay, too. That will be very informing and helpful for us. So I'll keep you guys updated on that, but that's it for today. And if you want to learn how to build apps like this and learn how to build stuff with AI, I have a course called Profit with AI that teaches you the exact things we're doing today to build the tools and apps that we are building right now. The apps, you know, how am I using these low code platforms? How am I actually integrating code into them? How are we turning these things around in a day or two, how are we able to go and test and validate these ideas? All of that is covered in that course. It shows you how to build these apps from scratch, how to find the best tools to do it. It teaches you with low code and code, uh, but the idea is to be a practical builder so you can build solutions today, ASAP, so that you can go and ship them out to the market as fast and as quickly as possible so that you could either make more money or get a higher paying job or get a promotion at your current job. So that sounds exciting to you. Click the link in the description below. Join the course Profit with AI. I love your beautiful face. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.